Last year, the M5 mount was one of the most popular telescope mounts in the world. Wow. This year, they've taken the existing design and improved upon it, renaming it to the AM5N. I'm like 90% certain the N is just to designate that it is new. So what is new? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be finding out as well as putting the mount to some unusual tests, including deep sky imaging with a Skywatcher Skymax 180 at 2,700 millimeters focal length. Yeah. And I'll be setting the mount up to be your extremely precise deep sky guide, as well as showcasing why it is infinitely better than its older German equatorial companions. So let's get started. I'm Damon Scotting, and this is Astronomy. I'm already a huge fan of the AM5. It's lightweight, portable, easy to set up, and can carry a significant payload. But most importantly, it gets the job done with some very precise go-to and tracking capabilities. So upon hearing the news of a newer model, I got very excited before being quietly underwhelmed. These are the main improvements. The payload capabilities without a counterweight have gone up from 13 kilograms to 15. The azimuth locks have been removed and instead replaced with an Allen key slot. The mounting bracket on the side has been removed. The ZWO logo has also been removed. And perhaps most interestingly, the power port has been relocated to the saddle, as well as the inclusion of a USB-C port to control the mount with. So at the time of the announcement, I thought that's not enough of an improvement to make me want to upgrade. Nevertheless, ZWO offered to loan me a copy of the AM5N mount for my upcoming trip to Tenerife, which I was more than happy to accept. And in hindsight, I'm happy to admit, although the improvements are, let's just say it, subtle, they do have a significant effect on your workflow. When using a larger scope, the issue of cable snags was consistently on my mind, especially when needing to do a meridian flip. Having the power output and mount control port both located on the same axis as a telescope makes a lot more sense and reduces this issue almost entirely. I have had a Celestron 10 inch Newtonian for large on and off periods of my life. I love it and then I yearn for more, so I sell it. And then I buy it back again because it's the most cost effective option there ever was. This telescope cost me around 300 pounds by the way, used condition, which is an absolute bargain. But it weighs 14 kilograms without attaching a camera to it, meaning I never dared risk it using it on my AM5 without the addition of a counterweight. So the increase in payload without counterweight to 15 kilograms from 13 kilograms is a welcome addition for the AM5N mount. Very few of us will be using setups that exceed 15 kg in weight, but you never want to tiptoe the line of exceeding the recommended weight limit. Right, let's test it out. Alongside the Skymax 180, I'm using an ASI 183 MC. Now this is a dumb idea. So dumb. Not only to be deep sky imaging at a ridiculous focal length of 2,700 millimeters and an F ratio of 15, but to be shooting at such a high focal length with a camera like the ASI 183MC, which has a very small pixel size. It's just foolish. These two things don't go together at all. By the way, for comparison, my Redcat shoots at 250 millimeters and an F ratio of 4.9. As you can imagine, I've obviously purchased each of these items for different uses. Right now, however, I'm filming a video for my Patreons, thanking them for their support and showcasing their new stickers I've made to attach to my gear that they have funded. Each image includes every single one of my members' names, multiple times, with the bigger names corresponding to those who have donated more. I did want to showcase some images captured with this gear, so I popped the Skymax onto the AM5N and mounted my Red Cat onto the AM5 to take some comparison images. So I pointed both telescopes at the same time to M13, the great globular cluster in Hercules. Now this is a raw stacked image of 15 one minute exposures captured with the Red Cat and the powerful ASI 2600 MC Duo. Not bad. Whilst this is a raw stacked image of 15 times one minute exposures captured with the Skymax 180 and the ASI 183 MC. If you've ever used a scope before, you'll be well aware that the focuser is a bit of a nightmare. Nevertheless, this image is surprisingly solid. I have no doubt that if you'd put forward the question to a group of elder astrophotographers and asked whether or not the AIM-5 N mount could capture unguided 60 second long deep sky images at 2,700 millimeters focal length, they would have just laughed at you. I'm not arguing the AM5N is heavily underrated and actually better at tracking than most conventional German equatorial mounts. I'm just saying people often disregard an instrument's potential before they've even pushed it to its limit. With the aid of an ASI Air, the mount is super easy to control, but I've been using it quite a lot recently with its own personally designed app. In fact, whilst I have the currently unreleased Skywatcher HAC125 mounted on it, I was actually unable to use the ASI Air as it does 
doesn't acknowledge cameras that don't belong to the ZWO sphere. So I couldn't play solve, which made the ASI Air's purpose redundant. So instead, going by the mounts app alone, I pinged between different deep sky objects and was very surprised by the swiftness and accuracy of the AM5N's go-to abilities. It's also a very quiet mount, which means whilst it's zipping between objects on opposite sides of the sky, it's not producing any unholy sounds like other mounts such as the CG5. Which is very nice. <laughs> Much like the 10 inch Celestron Newtonian, this has been my go to go to. It's cheap, and as far as mounts go, it's relatively lightweight. However, last year I was fortunate enough to be offered the opportunity to try out Celestron CGX mount, and at a similar price to the AM5N, it is capable of many of the same things. In fact, the CGX can take payloads up to 25 kilograms, which is slightly more than the AM5N. But here's the obvious elephant in the room. The legs of the CGX alone weigh more than the entirety of the AM5N. Yeah, the bloody tripod legs. And of course, don't forget the addition of multiple essential five kilogram counterweights. You've got to deal with all of this before you then have to sort out the head of the mount, you know, the actually important part. So by the end of it, the CGX weighs a total of 38.6 kilograms, which means if you wanted to travel with it, you'd need two suitcases to safely package it within the airline's guidelines. But of course, the biggest differences between harmonic drive mounts with strain wave gears like the AM5N over the more conventional German equatorial mounts is that strain wave motors have zero backlash, whilst the newer AM5N has less than 10 arc seconds periodic error. That is incredible. Now I know which one I would rather have to set up in my garden every night, let alone travel to another country with. Speaking of which, flying to places like Spain from the UK can be unbelievably cheap. But as I'm sure you'll be aware, this is just how the airline gets you on the plane. The way they really squeeze you for cash is through the cost of your seat and luggage. When I fly to Tenerife, I get a small bag included. The addition of a backpack is usually 30 pounds extra and a 20 kilogram suitcase was 59.99 on my most recent trip. That's each way. So for the return trip, those numbers really start to add up and the original fare of 27.99 starts to dwindle in comparison. But that small bag really starts to go a long way once you notice there's actually no weight restrictions and you can fit two, that's right, two AM5 mounts inside of it. Talk about travel friendly. There's also plenty of spare room for padding and well, since you're going to Tenerife, you may as well use your swimming shorts for maximum packing efficiency. It is recommended to purchase the TC40 carbon fiber tripod legs alongside the mount. And to be fair, I would highly recommend these because they are infinitely better than the icy cold metal tripod legs of the past. They weigh only 2.3 kilograms and can carry total payloads of up to 50 kg, which is more than enough. But on this trip, I once again tried something that wasn't recommended. I used the carbon fiber of a tripod legs that were included with my Seastar S50. Now is this a terrible idea? Possibly, but it did the trick and I just thought that'd be worth sharing. I was doing so with small refractor telescopes mounted on the AM5 by the way. So for balance issues and weight distribution, don't even consider trying this with an SCT. I'm sure some of you watching this aren't going to necessarily agree with the way that I've been using this mount. In fact, watching me pack two of them into my hand luggage may have made some of you start sweating behind the knees. But this mount is versatile, it's unbelievably lightweight, and above all else, it's very good at what it does, and that is finding and tracking the wonders of our night sky. Don't get me wrong, it's not cheap, no sir. But then, in this hobby, very few things are. At more than $2,000, you're not going to be buying one on the whim. But certainly, in comparison to other advanced mount alternatives, the AM5N is bang on the money. I could spend another 30 minutes going through all of the images I've captured with it, and just going on and on about why this is still my favorite mount of all time, and how it's going to take something truly special to knock it off its perch. But I think I've made my point. If you would like to purchase the AM5N mount for yourself, then I've attached a link in the description below. Thanks for watching. I'm Damon Scotting, and this was Astronomical. <laughs>